the utilities just by entering a question mark down here in the search bar and hitting enter. It's at the very bottom of the screen. Okay. And it's right. Can you see it? Uh oh. Yeah. There we there go. There we go. Okay. That's what I was looking for. We hit enter, and up pops this screen. And this is going to tell you. I'll make it big for you. This is going to tell you all of the different things this can do. If you see on the left hand side, there are short um, little terms that actually. These are representative of the website that the toolbar is going to search for. Ah, right there. Search through, yeah. Okay. So like here is Anantech, and I'm going to, as an example, look how many there are. Oh, yeah. All. I mean, this is just so great, and it's all the ones that you would ever really need to go to to search for anything. Um, one on here is WebMD, which I know is a great one for people who are sick or have any issues about, any questions about... Um, illnesses, that's where they're going to go. So what you do go ahead. is you go down, back down here to the search bar and you hit MD and you hit cold. Enter. It opens up the browser and it's already searched cold in there, right there for you. Wow. It's specifically on WebMD, you use the key term right. for and that. Right. And the key terms are all listed in that menu before. Let me show you how it works on, like, say we're just working on this Word document call for help is the best show in the world. <laughs> and, um, Not that we're biased. Yeah, no, of course not. And you want to search something right there, and then, um, you don't even need to open up a browser window. You just hit enter, and there it pops it up, nice and easy. Wow. And this, you can um, even like translate websites. Let me show you how you do that. That's pretty cool. You just put the URL in. See, I guess I've only used it com. for specific reasons, but it, you know, it, there's so there's so much functionality. Yeah, there. and then you go E N stands for English okay. dash E S stands for Spanish, and I've already done it over here, so we don't need to wait for it. But okay. um, yeah, what it's going to do is it's going to bring Tech TV up in Spanish. Wow. Awesome. Okay, so on to the next one. you got to check that one out, though, you people at home. You'll absolutely love it. I've got to use so it more. Wow. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so if you've noticed up here, my uh, toolbar up here is really pretty. It has this cute picture of a cat. This is from hotbar.com. Great website. Um, I'm going to take you to the website, and I'm going to explain what we've got here now. What you do is, the thing I like about this toolbar the best is the pictures. It makes it look nice and pretty, but it has a lot of functionality as well. Depending on website, which website you go to, um, these buttons here will bring up the most popular sites in those areas. Okay. Um, it has over, you know, thousands and thousands of skins, all different categories. Awesome, awesome. Unless, of course, <clears throat> it crashes on you. Like it just did. <laughs> but it's anyways, okay, it's still there. Yeah, okay, here we are back. Um, for It's going to give you, if you want to search the web, it gives you lots of different suggestions on the best websites in those areas to go to. Go to. Great. Wow, two Wonderful. additions that uh, will really make your browsing experience and just your Windows experience in general all better. Yes. Without using Google. Not to say that it's I know, not we love good. Google, but you should try these out. For sure. Spice of life. So where can people get a hold of you if they have suggestions? They can send them to cat at techtv.com. And you can also go to the website and check out the article that I've written on these two awesome toolbars. That's techtv.com slash call for help in case you didn't know. Yeah, I think you guys know. You know. You know <laughs> our website, don't you? He's yes. not paying attention. You think you got game? Thank you, Kat. You're awesome. Want to learn how to become a power gamer? Then stay tuned because the founder of SharkyExtreme.com, Alex Sharky Ross, is going to take us to school when Call for Help continues. I was just maxing my frame rates with Alex Sharky Ross, the founder of SharkyExtreme.com, a very popular gaming site on the internet, and he's going to do his best to turn me into a power gamer, finally. I'm, I'm moving past solitaire, and Alex, thank you for coming in to help. Oh, thank you. Now, we hear a lot about uh, gaming, but we're, we're not exactly sure how to start recommending the type of hardware. What type of hardware would you recommend starting with to uh, um, have a good game? The first thing you need is money. Oh, okay. Um, that's that's the first thing. And All understanding right. parents or spouse or whoever. Um, and the second thing you need to do is really start off with a good 3D card. Most PCs come with, I don't know, either on board or, or just some sort of old 3D card from, I don't know, two or three years ago. And we're talking, this is the, this is the one that I was holding up a little earlier mm -hmm. uh, before the show had started. This is the NVIDIA GeForce 4 Ti 4600, yeah. 128 megabytes. Yeah. That's um, right. RAM on here. Yeah, BGA RAM. See those little little squares These there. These chips here. Yeah, that's, that's the RAM for you. Wow. And this just normally fits in uh, 
an AGP AG slot. slot. Mm -hmm. That's and correct. What does what does AGP mean specifically for people that are playing games? Um, well, it means accelerated graphics port, but you guys don't really care about that. What, <laughs> no, we what don't. Really, no, no, what it really means is um, this will accelerate um, you know, 3D for you. So a lot of these 3D games that are out now, like Serious Sam, Medal of Honor, um, they have complex 3D engines, and they require a lot of processing power that you know, a CPU by itself and a sort of regular 3D card can't cope with. I mean, there's a lot of polys to push, polygons. Okay. So you're talking about CPU alongside getting a good video yeah. card. This is, I don't know It's which not a miracle worker. You still need the heart of the machine. This is, the, this is a CPU. This is an AMD chip. Yeah. And a, which one is this? This is the Athlon XP uh, 2000 XP. Okay. And uh, runs at 1.67 gigahertz. Wow. So that's a pretty nippy CPU. That naming convention's kind of odd. Yeah, it's that marketing cack all over, you know what I mean? It's just, it. Yeah, but it's, it's currently the gamer's favorite um, CPU. Just bang for your buck, you know, that's the one to go for, I'd Great. say. So that CPU video card, what about some type of controller? What? Um, most 3D first-person shooters, those are, that's the genre that everybody really likes. Um, you really just need a keyboard and a mouse. All right. um, you know, learn to use those, forget joysticks, those are kind of, you know, waggle those on something else, I don't know. Um, but you can also have this this little thing, which is quite cool, called the Nostromo N50, and it substitutes for a keyboard, so you can kind of get rid of this and just feel a bit more comfy. Hmm. Unless it you're left-handed, in which case you're, oh, uh, don't, I don't know. They don't make a no. southpaw version? No, they discriminated against the southpaws. Okay, so what if you don't have a, a very good or very powerful gaming system? Oops, sorry. Um, well, get a screwdriver, you know, go to uh, somewhere like uh, pricewatch.com and find Find yourself a 3D card from either NVIDIA or ATI. You can get one for you know, anywhere from $150 up to $400 for that, which you, you don't really need to spend $400. That's the just, video card. Yeah, that's, that's for the video card, and then about okay. $150 for the CPU. All right. So uh, I understand we have some actual comparison footage showing a system, the yeah. same system with different video cards in it to, to really show you the difference side by side. Oh, wow. This is the same system, just different video cards. Yeah, you, you can see, I mean, with the with the full full 3D card in there, I mean, you're getting a really bad frame rate. Obviously as that one on the right. Explosions occur, yeah, the one on the right. Um, as a, explosions occur, it just slows down. It just can't handle all the, all the, you know, all the characters on there, the explosions, and other sort of complex 3D features going on. I'm that is sure literally, if, wow. I'm not sure if you turned on AA on the, on the left one, but. AA being anti-aliasing? Yes, that kind of gets rid of all the jaggies and the pixel, the sort of pixel popping yeah, kind of but stuff. It shows you guys at home, I mean, how, how much a, a good video yeah, card... A good video card will just make your game run faster, it'll look crisper, um, you know, you can play at higher resolutions, which is always nice. All right. So things so just look better. where could you get a hold of any uh, gaming tips? Um, for example, Serious Sam, if you just went to uh, gamefacts.com, that's, that's a good place. And uh, see if we can we get go. there. Game facts, FAQ, frequently yeah. asked questions. That's the one. Um, and if you just sort of type serious Sam in there, using the keyboard, not this. Yeah. <laughs> no, not that little uh, no. controller. Boy, this is just weird. Yeah, it is weird, but um, you know, if you if, if you just sort of use it for a while, yeah, yeah you'll, you'll get comfy. Just make okay. sure you got big hands, grow some fingers. I'm, I've got a problem then. You have a problem. I have small hands. <laughs> small hands, warm heart. Isn't that what they always that's, said? That's what they say. Yeah. So, <laughs> oops. Uh, it's okay. Go back here. Now this has got a listing of, of a lot of. I'm assuming. Yeah, of, of any kind of game, actually for Xbox or for you know any other console. Oh wow, not uh, just PC games. Yeah, and this. There we go. For some reason it doesn't. We're in come an up. endless loop. That's okay. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There we go. It's okay. Facts and guides. So there's a walkthrough. Um, you know, I'm not, and there's there's one for secrets, but let's just go to a walkthrough. Okay, and a walkthrough would be. You know, start at level one. You know, jump this way jump that way, shoot this guy, shoot that guy. So that's what I used to get through Grim Fandango a few years ago. That's, I used that's to walk through. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So what about the hardware side of things? I know we kind of blasted through this stuff mm -hmm. real quick. Where can we get more information and more details about um, the type of hardware we'd want? There's, there's quite a few places. Um, if you're looking for something you know, free, then you know, the good old internet. Sites like uh, Hard OCP, they have daily updates. Kyle. Kyle, a good friend Kyle, that's yeah. right. He's known for, uh, you know, spitting out marketing. So, <laughs> He's done a great job with yeah, the website, hardocp.com. Yeah, or even the magazine we write for. CPU. Uh, yeah, 
You know, That's right, we do. Monthly. Yes, we do, don't we? We just have bad haircuts. In it, but. Especially now, they put like caricatures and my ha hair is like really exaggerated. You gotta see this, it's insane. Yeah, I got tiger stripes. Wow, this is insane. So, uh, in He's got daily updates and reviews of all these products. So, you know, I mean, when you go into a store, there's tons of video cards to choose yeah. from. Tons of CPUs as well. So don't want to go out there making a decision just based off no. of what you think is okay. No. Check with us these particular sites yeah. and make sure you know what you're getting into. Thank you, yeah. Alex. Oh, thank you, Chris. Again for coming in, Alex Ross, the founder of Sharky Extreme. And if you want to know how to become a power gamer, just check out the article Alex wrote for us at TechTV.com/slash/call-for-help. It's got a listing of the hardware you'll need and links to these informative sites and a few more. Up next, why pay a small fortune for Photoshop when you can download the GIMP? That's its name for free. And Roger Chang has got it, the free file of the day, when Call for Help returns. Head over to the Call for Help website, techtv.com slash call for help, and scroll down a bit. See, there's our techno babble. You can get some freeware there. Right click with power. But we're going to talk about my computer, the best ripping software. Now when we say ripping, we're talking about yanking data from CDs. Now I just so happen to like uh, Nero as the application to, to take audio tracks off of a particular CD. And I was doing it this weekend with my CDs of Schoolhouse Rock. I just found out actually that they're coming out with a DVD. I found that from, uh, I think it's blogblogbaby.com. Is that from Rhino? What do you mean Rhino? The, the, the oh, people I, no, I think it's actually being produced with Oh, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. I can't remember. I'm going to have to find the information for me. Anyway, tell me what your favorite burning software is. Head over to this website, techtv.com slash call for help. Leave your feedback here in the talk back section or send an email message to my computer at techtv.com. And Roger's out here for a reason. He's going to present the free file, something called the GIMP. The GIMP, yes. It is an acronym. Okay. And it stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program. Basically, it's an open source version of a Photoshop image editor. It's got a, a lot of windows, too. Yes, uh, it is kind of um, one of the one only downside I can really find about this program is that it is kind of clunky and it's kind of confusing if you've never used anything like this program before. Let me close that. Sure. Uh, but what it does offer is a very powerful set of tools that allow you to do a lot of the things that you normally would use Photoshop or even uh, PaintShop Pro for. In a, Basically, e uh, easy, uh, not easy to use, but uh, free in a, in a free software program. But you say it's not that incredibly easy to use. It's not, incre it's not difficult, but it does take you learning the actual instruction. Like, for example, if you used Photoshop for the first time, you could probably sit there for an hour and figure out how to use at least a portion of, of the available tool. Here, you kind of get the same tools, but they're not laid out in the same way. For example, you have your brush selector, and of course, they have some really odd brushes here. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, unless you had this tool bo uh, toolbar uh, box open, you would have never known that you would be able to, like, now how come I can't draw? It's because you have one of these other tools selected. But you didn't see that because it wasn't laid out in front of you. There's a lot of different, if you notice in the taskbar, there's a lot of different things running down there, yes. a lot of windows. And that's, that's another thing is that when you open Photoshop, it's just one program. But when you open uh, uh, GIMP, the GIMP, that it comes out in each and its individual window, which, I mean, in some ways, it's it's easier because you can just kind of tab between what you want to do. Oh, yeah, that's true. Now, uh, you, you can use it for photos, you can use it for image editing. Uh, what operating systems is it available it's for? A, it was originally written for the Unix slash Linux uh, pro, uh, platform, but it's actually out now for the Windows 32-bit, uh, Windows, uh, so basically any Windows 98, uh, 95, as well as 2000 XP. The yeah. only thing it doesn't support right now is GIF, and that's to do with a legal uh, wrangling over uh, the uh, basic who owns the GIF uh, format and who has the ability to license that out. Is that Unisys? It's got a, a stranglehold on it. I think it is. Yeah. It's it's a very interesting point, but suffice to say, uh, GIF is not supported currently. That's okay. You can always use a uh, an image. Uh, manipulator to, to save something or as... Or you just a, open up the Windows uh, Internet Explorer and save as as a bitmap. Or there's a tip it. for you guys. You can drag and drop an image into Internet Explorer and save it as something different, like a bitmap. Yes. Which this will work with. Correct. Very nice. Something called the GIMP. Again, we got the link for you over at our website, techtv.com slash call for help. Call for help. This is Chris Pearl and Roger Chang. Kat, how can we help someone? Well, on the Intel Tech TV NetCam Network, it's Billy from Union, New Jersey. He needs some help. Ah, Billy! Hey, how are you, Chris? Doing good. How about yourself? All right. How Ro Roger was just out your way. 
Kind oh, of. really? I was yeah. in uh, Jersey City. I have absolutely no idea where Union is in New Jersey. <laughs> but I Not figured that it's a far away. How was New York, Roger? How was I it? was great. Um, I would, wouldn't mind living there maybe a year, but, you know, nothing longer. I, the weather, yeah, it's the weather. Take, I'm so right? used to California. <laughs> Sorry. So, yeah. Mild <laughs> summers. What or can mild you do? winters, I should say. Oh, we're glad you made it back safe, that's for sure. Yeah, Thank we, you. We are, too. Thank you, Billy. What, what can you help you with? Okay, I have a question. Um, how are viruses created, created and who creates them? <laughs> oh, boy. It's, a, it's kind of a double-edged sword, I would say. Viruses <laughs> are they're programs that are pretty much designed to cause damage and wreak havoc. Why are they created? People get bored. They want to extract yeah, vengeance. It's Most of the time, it's someone... Think of it as a way of graffiti, a cyber graffiti. It's a way to tag a building, or in this case, someone's computer. It's a way to get your name out. So, hey, look, I caused so much... So much so many problems, so many you know, in, uh, issues with computer systems worldwide that people are putting my name or my program out there on the front page of the newspaper. You know, I mean, it's a, I guess in their sense, it's a, it's a cool way to say, hey, look what I did. You know, I messed up everyone's computer around the world, and I'm the one that did it. Only me. You know, it's kind of a, kind of an elitist. It's type kind of, of a kind of a male adolescent thing. Um, not to say that all people who design no, viruses so, are male adolescents, but it's kind right. of a you know one-upmanship. It's always yeah. a, it's always about you know trying to show off your skills. But there's really no reason to create a virus other than to say I've done it. Or to, and, yeah. and sometimes actually viruses are created to to kind of cause a bit of stir in the sense that we we all know that Windows is not 100% perfect. No operating system is. Yeah, but a lot true. of viruses are created for it because like. 90% of the world is using Windows, so they, they, they find exploits and they actually write programs specifically designed to exploit those exploits. holes uh, that are in the operating system. So it, it's a way to call attention to a problem that may otherwise go uh, glossed over. And as to the question about what are they written in, they're written in a number of different languages. Depend, uh, some are as simple as Visual Basic or actually uh, macros mm -hmm. within Word. Yep. I mean, that can create a virus and it's very simple to use. Or it can be a, something complex as an assembly language, or even you know C, something very popular. One thing I haven't seen in it is Java, which is I'm I sure it'll come if it hasn't already. But I think Java's uh, the way it's designed doesn't allow for that. Hopefully, Wait, they affect websites. Can they? Yeah. You bet they can. Anything that's going to be connected or used, anything that deals with software, can is susceptible uh, to any type of virus attack, Billy. That's a sad fact, but just the way it goes. More of this, but yeah. Thanks for the call. I understand we have another caller on the line. Is that true? Yeah, that's what you do. It's Jerry from Cleveland, Ohio. Jerry! Hey. Can't see it, but we can hear you loud and clear. I yeah, think. I was calling to ask, uh, uh, how, do you have a program that I can download that allows me to uh, create 3D modeling? Oh, really? You thinking about getting into that field? Uh, no, not really. I just want to maybe create, like, maybe a, a cartoon or something like that. Oh, sure. Uh, and, and I think we've got a couple suggestions, one of which is available for free, something called Maya Personal Edition. This is actually a scaled-down version from the one that would cost $8,000. This is free. Yeah. It does have a watermark, though. Yes, and it, uh, you do a registration process in order to download. It's a large program, so it takes a while to download, but they actually issued this out for people like you, as well as students, and people want to play with the application, figure out how to use it, but the restriction they place on it is no commercial uses. So in other words, you can't download it and start creating uh, app, you know, uh, pr projects or animations with it and trying to sell it out. Yeah. Because they do put that watermark in it. Yeah, and it's like the watermark is basically like an image that's splashed across. Or in this case, it's a, I think it's one of the lower right or lower left. There's where, two. Two. Yeah, there's a bug in the corner, and then it says created with uh, uh, the last wave front. Yeah, blah blah blah. Uh, so that's one. There's another one that doesn't have that limitation called Blender. You can find that at Blender.nl. Is that or right? Blender3D.com. There we go. They uh, changed it a bit, I guess. NL is the original uh, Dutch site, and this is their uh, worldwide site right now. And what's cool about Blender is that it's totally open source, which means it's free. The only downside, like a lot of other open sources, it's because it's it's been pieced together by uh, different authors over a while. It's maybe not as intuitive to use, but it's a very powerful program. Yeah. And uh, But you do will need to spend some time reading the instructions and actually learning the concepts of 3D animation before you can actually take advantage of what Blender has to offer. It's kind of like uh, GIMP. You were saying that yeah. a lot of developers have come along after the author had originally developed it and added their own two cents, I guess, for it. Jerry, do you think those two will help you get up and running? Sure. Good. Well, actually, if you if you do create something with either one of them, we'd love to see it. Okay. You know, it doesn't even have to. It doesn't have to be perfect. We just like knowing that the recommendations that we make are actually working for people. 
All right. <laughs> it's a good thing. Thanks for the call, Jerry. Hey, thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you, Roger. Sure. Uh, once again, you are just a, a cookie jar of knowledge. Just a jar? Well, maybe, I was going to say that, but I didn't want to like, you know, a, I know you're sensitive about your... that. One more chance to take the daily quiz, techtv.com slash call for help. Click on the quiz, answer correctly, you'll be in the running for a call for help t-shirt. So here's today's quiz. Which is not peer-to-peer -peer software, eDonkey2000, Morpheus, Sheriff You Can, or NetMeeting? Oh, I'm going to have to throw you in the bed. Uh, oh, before the break, we asked you, which is not peer-to-peer -peer software, eDonkey2000, Morpheus, Sheriff You Can, or NetMeeting? And the answer is actually C, Sheriff You Can. But I know of it doesn't exist yet. But what does exist is our bonus tip. Mm -hmm. If you listen to MP3s, internet radio stations, and watch movies with the Windows Media Player, why not make a multimedia playlist of your favorites? So we've got open the new Windows Media Player. We've got Windows XP here, but this will work just the same in Windows 98 and other versions as long as you've got this version of the Windows Media Player running. We flip down to the Radio Tuner presets here, and these are our presets. And by the way, you can go in and add and search and make all these new things. If I wanted to add Jazz FM, because I love jazz, go Flim in the BBs, woo! -hoo! I click and then drag it over, let me grab it there, let me, come on, go, drag and drop it into, as soon as, as soon as I can grab it, unless of course it's not going to let me grab it, but that's okay. After you've searched through your hard drive for your favorite song or movie, you find an MP3, you drag it basically into there, you click the Radio Tuner preset link in the media library, right over here, this is what I'm talking about, and then you would be able to drag and drop into the left hand panel the icon to your playlist, and these are my like sample playlists here, this is what I'm, trying to show you here and it, hopefully it'll work for you the radio tuner presets if i wanted to actually i'm going to do this simple way i'm just going to add a playlist and send it to the send to playlist so radio free version liquid whatever is in the send to playlist or at least it should oh boy i'm not even going to bother looking for it but that's how you do it easy to do because normally you'd be anyway drag and drop double click whatever however whatever works for you works for me and you know what works for me as well if i can finish speaking why don't you tell us who's been sending us the email cat <laughs> are you okay i hope so okay well michael sent us an email he says that once in a while my computer gets slow and lags. It says I need more virtual memory. Do you know where I can get more? Ooh, does he say what operating system he's got? He is using Windows XP. Okay. If you're looking to bump up the uh, virtual memory, and that's, that's a part of your hard drive that's basically used to kind of emulate physical memory, right-click on my computer, then I believe it's flipped over to the Advanced tab. Uh, is it Settings? No, wait, no, no, no. I know where it is. Environment Variables. Right. And then, no. I was wrong. It is settings, advanced, and then down here, virtual memory, change, mm -hmm. and then you can change that. Right now, it's set at a variable width between, or size, 384 megabytes or 768 megabytes. And in here, you could bump it up if it's not enough. Of course, you could lower it. My suggestion to see it says customer size. Uh -huh. I say just go with a system managed size, and then it'll be smart enough to know whether it needs more memory or virtual memory or not. It's supposed to be smart, right? It's supposed to be. And if you have that, op we didn't have that option turned on, but then again, when have we ever been smart? I think you're pretty smart. All right, Kelly wants to know, I was wondering how to remove the partitions that section off the hard drive into different drive sections. Okay, does the, Kelly? Yeah. Do, do, do they say, I don't know if it's a guy or a girl, is it, uh, did they say what operating system they're using? Windows 9, uh, Windows 95, 98, and ME. Okay, I would actually go over to powerquest.com. They make a piece of software that I, I've actually recommended for years, uh -huh. and it's, it's only gotten better with age. Something called Partition Magic. Yeah. And with Partition Magic, you're going to be able to... PowerQuest, come on, let's go to... I think you can actually download a, a demo. If not, that's okay, because I know you can purchase Partition Magic. And what this will allow you to do is basically uh, manage those partitions on your hard drive. And a partition is a section of the hard drive that could be a... You can have a virtual drive. So instead of having like one physical 30 gig drive, you could have umpteen different uh, physical drives. So you can have a C, D, E, F, G, and you split them up because you want to split up your data and whatnot. I'll put the link for you in the show notes. Thank you, Kat. All right. I'd also like to thank our guest, Alex Sharkey Ross, for stopping by, and of course, all of you for watching. See you later.